Hello everybody and welcome to the bonus stream. I actually haven't done one of these before. <laughs> Usually I play just one game in a stream and then that's it for the day. But this week Worldwide Games came out, or 51 Worldwide Games or Clubhouse Games, depending on what region of the world you're in. And I love this game so much I just wanted to stream it and talk about it, mostly because it has Hanafida in it. And I do love Hanafida as just about everybody who has... Um, watched my streams over the last couple of months knows i've done a lot of videos on sorry not streams but videos i've done a lot of videos on hanafida i think it's great i think it's a, a wonderful card game very cultural to japan and i wanted to i wanted to um to talk about it share it perhaps even give you some strategies if you're new to hanafida i'll talk through as i play i'll talk through i guess um my my thinking as i play and otherwise you'll get a chance to have a look at clubhouse games 51 worldwide games this is a like i said this is a new release from nintendo this week it brings together 51 classic games from around the world and it's the perfect introduction to a lot of these games for people if you've never had a chance to play hanafida before or mahjong or chess or any of the other ones this is the way to go to learn how to play them so let's jump into it. As you would expect for a Nintendo game, the interface is elegant. It's very easy to get into. You don't need to be a gamer to enjoy this one. You don't need to know anything about video games to be able to get in and play this. So we'll try to play an online game straight up. Let's hopefully get a, a game of Hanafida going. Um, so if you are going to play online, you actually are asked to... Let's play with anybody. So we just randomly pair up with somebody. Um, you're asked to choose three different games to play. So the three that you're most interested in playing. And, you know, if, um, if you get paired up, then you get to play those. So the little people icons down the bottom suggest that there are people already in those ones looking to play. Let's try to, let's try to get into Hanafida. And let's try to pick two other games that absolutely nobody would else, else would want to play. Because that way, the chances are we'll get a chance to play Hanafida. Uh, let's go with Hare and Hounds. Because that's a very simple game that I don't imagine too many people are chomping on the bit to play. There are 51 games in this thing, obviously, like I mentioned. But not all of them are you know, brilliant classics that will last you for hours and hours and hours of on end for play. Um, let's go with toy baseball as well. If we do happen to get a toy game of toy baseball going, that's not the worst thing in the world either. So the games are split between card games, board games, and these kind of novelty games, which, uh, which are great fun. Um, but yeah, toy baseball is actually a really neat little game. You can actually get a toy baseball thing in Japan. It's a very popular board game. And this is a pretty close uh, emulation of it. While you wait for somebody to play, as we're doing right here, you can actually pick a game to play as well. Single player, just so you practice. Oh, there we go. Oh, damn. Looks like we've got <laughs> a game of hare and hounds going. No, there are no games for cute girls in this one. Unfortunately, this is old style board games. You just have to use your imagination. Um, hare and hounds is a... I really didn't think anybody would actually want to play this, to be honest. So Hare and Hounds is a very old strategy game uh, that was... It's a French game, actually. Um, and the goal is to get the hare there to the other end of the table without being blocked by the hounds. It's a super simple game. It roughly emulates military strategy. But it's a, it's also solved. So if you play right, and I'm not going to say... I'm not going to suggest that I am going to be playing right here. Um... The hare will always win. I don't think I'm going to play this right. But anyway. Hare and Hounds is a very simple game. <laughs> you take one turn. The piece moves. You take one turn. I'm going to get stuck here. That's it. I've lost this one already. The hounds are actually going to beat me. Ah, oh, dearie me. That's no good. How embarrassing. So the uh, the hounds are actually going to stick me in a corner. Oh, 
Or maybe I do escape here, actually. No, I don't. I get caught. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah. I really didn't think I'd have to play that one. I thought I'd get a chance to play Hanafida. Let's try again. So because you play three different games, you choose three different games at a time to play, there is a chance that you'll play ones that you don't really want to play. <laughs> Let's go with Mahjong. Nobody's going to want to play Mahjong. I'm the only person in that can speak... I'm the only English-speaking person that cares about Mahjong. Let's put it that way. There's no way I'm going to get a game of Mahjong going. Let's try this again. Now I can play single player while I wait. Um, we'll go to Hanafida. Ah, hello, Britta. Thanks for joining in. And yeah, please do watch back tomorrow. I will be talking through all of these games as I play them. Ah, yes, I got a game of Hanafida going. Excellent. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll introduce you to the strategies of Hanafida. But uh, yes, I know it's very late in New Zealand. So thanks for just jumping on to say hello. Uh, okay, so Hanafida is a Japanese flower card game, and it's a basic matching card game. There are 12 different suits, each representing a month of the year. Each has four cards in it, and basically your goal is to match those four cards together to make certain sets of cards. Now, that sounds more complex than it really is once you learn the game. But as you can see right now, um, the, the cards that are at the bottom that are uh, circled in gold... They're the ones that have a match. So you can see their blossoms match with the bird blossoms. The leaves there, the autumn leaves match with the two autumn leaf cards there. And then that one matches with the crane. Now different cards have different um, values to them. The crane card is actually particularly valuable. So let's match that one up right away. And, oh, as a bonus, that's actually a very valuable card as well. Let's match that. So straight away, I've got two of the more valuable cards out there. And then after you match a card or place a card onto the play field, another card pops up and you maybe, if it, if it matches, then you also get that match as well. And that's basically how Hanafida works. You just keep matching cards until you make a particular set. Now, right now, I have one of the poetry slips, the poetry cards, which is the little, um, the little tag there. And that's actually a good chance to make a set. So that one, as you can see, is another poetry card. So I'll match that with the bird. And now I've got two of the poetry cards. I, it does sound more complex than it really is. I, I swear to you, it's... Um, because there's only four cards per month, and the cards are very visually distinctive from one another, it becomes very quick... You very quickly recognize the different, different types of sets. Uh, the different types of cards that you can match. Uh, so there we go. I've just taken the deer. The challenge in Mahjong is actually... Re oh, sorry, in Hanafida is actually in remembering the different sets that you can make. Because there are quite a few of them. And because there's no numbers on the cards, it, it actually can be a little bit different, difficult to remember what sets go... Um, but that's just something you just learn as you play along. So let's match up that one. I've got now four ribbons. Poetry slips. I have a score in hand if I can get to five. So that's a good start that I've got. Unfortunately, my opponent does have the moon. The moon is a very valuable card indeed. But I don't think there's any risk of them making a good set out of those. So right now, I can't actually match anything on the table. I'm going to throw away my least important card, that one. I've already got the best card in that set of four. So I don't. that card really doesn't have too much value in the game anymore. So let's get rid of that. That way there's no chance that he can use it. And as a result, I get a pretty good card, which is nice. Ooh. So the moon plus the cherry blossoms there is a very strong set. There is one more card. he can, If he can get one more card, which is the sake cup, which hasn't showed up yet. If he gets the sake cup, he gets a lot of points, which is not good. So I want to try to finish this as quickly as possible now. I'm going to put that one out just in the hope that I get a matching set. And I can then complete it because I only need one more ribbon to complete a set of five ribbons. What makes a card more valuable than another? More matches? No, there certain cards just have more points. And basically, 
if the card has a picture on it or an animal, then it's worth more points. The cards that don't have anything on them are, are not worth much at all. So it, every card has a predetermined point value, which is just something you need to memorize. But it's not really memorizing. You just need to recognize that uh, the more detailed picture cards probably have uh, are worth more points. Okay, I'm going to win this now. <laughs> or maybe not. Um, so I've got one card left. That's a very valuable card. That's the Rain Man. Uh, you can see, you can tell it's the Rain Man because it's a dude with an umbrella. He can make a match, which is with that bird there. But I just realized that's probably not going to be enough to... Compl nah. That's not going to be enough to finish a set. I was hoping to get another ribbon, but he'll get the points now. No, nope, stalemate. Okay, cool. So stalemate didn't just we didn't actually have a winning hand, which doesn't help for teaching people how to play Hanafida. Um, okay, so that was a pretty good first hand for him. He got two of the seeds, which are the animal cards, and two of the poetry slips. So if you get five of either of those, you do win points. Um, the good news for me is that what's on the board is not too bad for me. Um, these ones here, I actually have the full four. So I, 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 there's no risk that my opponent will take those two cards that are there in the middle. So I can use this one straight away to grab that. And the rain man and the bird with the kind of the, the, the wing motif in the picture there. Those I can just take whenever I want because he can't possibly take them because I've got the other two cards in my hand. So really, the strategy of Hanafida is knowing that it's kind of being able to understand what your opponent has and then use your cards to counter that. So he's, the moon on the uh, play field is particularly potent. As soon as you can grab that, you should always grab the moon. Whether Even if it doesn't suit your hand, if your opponent gets the moon, there's every chance they're going to win the hand and get a lot of points out of it. So just to remove it from the play field, I will take the moon. And I'll just grab some junk. I'm trying to explain all this very quickly as I play because there's a limit to how long you've got to take a turn. So I hope I'm not making, uh, I'm not being too confusing. If you have any questions as we play, just let me know and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Um, so once again, there's no reason for me to worry about those two cards. I've got the full set. I can either choose to grab a junk card with those two autumn cards. There's no picture on them. They're not worth much. Or I can grab the moths, which are pretty useful because he's now got three of the seeds and that moth is an auth another seed. So, I mean, I, I already had the card, so it, there wasn't any risk he was going to get it. But it just kind of points out that he's not going to be able to... Um, it's going to be harder for him to get the seeds and you might think of a different direction to take. Uh, the sake cup there is the dangerous one. I unfortunately can't take that sake cup right now. He may be able to. If he does, then he's in a danger of winning the hand. But I've got to keep playing the way I've been playing. Let's grab that one. Oh, cool. So I get the sake cup out of pure luck. And because I already have the moon, I'm actually going to win this hand right now. Bang. So that's moon viewing. That is worth quite a few points. Now, the I guess the strategy of the other big strategy point in Hanafida is whether you koi koi or finish. Koi koi means you continue playing on. If you get another complete hand, you actually get more points. But if your opponent then completes a hand before you do, they get double the points. So you definitely don't want that to happen. And right now, I just want to make sure that I'm on the board with more points. So I'm going to finish. I don't think I'll be able to get another good hand before he will. And I get five points for that. That's pure luck. Those two cards are really valuable together. And uh, you generally want to try to uh, avoid your opponent getting those as possible. So they tend to be taken out of play quite quickly by anybody who's halfway competent at Hanafida. Um, so I haven't got too much I can pair up right now. I'm going to grab this one just because it's a good card. And it just takes it out of the play field and make sure that I have that card in my um, my scoring box. 
unfortunately, he's probably got all the good cards right now, and yeah, he's going to roll with it. But I get the moth now because I have that moth and uh, flower combination. That's pretty valuable. I'll grab that. Now, if you've never played Hanafida before, I highly recommend Clubhouse Games as a way to start because it actually, um, the, the way that the game explains the rules and the AI of the opponents is so low in when you're just playing against you know computer AI that it is the perfect way to learn how to play the game before you jump online and try and play other people who know what they're doing. And this is the, definitely the perfect way to start to learn a pretty... It's not a complex game in terms of the mechanics, but it is a complex game in terms of the strategies you need to apply. So this game lets you test those out before you take it online. A lot of other Hanafida games kind of throw you in the deep end straight away with some pretty complex AI. Because in Japan, this game is pretty well known, so they don't need the lesson, the tutorial level AI quite so much. Uh, I've only got one card here I can match, so I may as well match it. It's not really helping me in any way, but I'm just hoping to put an end to this hand at this point and just make sure that he doesn't get a really good score because if he does then this is the last round there's only three rounds in the game if he gets a good score then he'll win i'm pretty sure he's going to win this hand and it's just about doing something to um doing something to make sure that i limit the amount of points that he gets now if i throw that autumn card there out the next turn i can claim with a deer assuming that he hasn't got an autumn card of his own. So I'll do that. I'll take the risk. Oh, he's thrown the, the moons out. So he'll claim the moon now. He'll almost certainly have a moon card. If he doesn't, then that's a big bonus for me. Oh, he doesn't. Lucky me. So I have one of the other moon cards, the month, the December month cards, which is that one. I pair that with the moon and take that out of place straight away. So there's no chance... He can get that one. That really limits his scoring opportunities now, which means I, sh I, I should actually win this from this point because he may score, but it won't be anywhere near as good as to get him five points. So let's take the deer. Well, that's the other dangerous card. He'll probably pay, pair that up. That one there is the basket of cherry blossoms. That's worth a lot of points if you compare it with a sake cup, but he hasn't actually got the ability to capture that one either. So he will now get the ribbons, Poetry Slips, which is five of the ribbon cards. He'll need to Koi Koi because Poetry Slips is only worth one point. But if he Koi's Koi's, this is a last ditch effort. There's almost no chance that he's going to be able to get enough to beat me at this point. So I'll play that. I've got no other choice. And I got the Sake Cup. So out of pure luck, I actually win the hand as well. Because uh, I have the Moon plus the Sake Cup, which is worth five points. And uh, Chaff is just 10 cards that are junk. They're not worth any... You know, individually, they're not worth many points. So there we go. I won. Simple as that. Actually won pretty convincingly in the end. Because he Koi koi and I got the... Uh, because he Koi koi and I got the hand, I actually beat him. Um, I got double the points as well. So... The 6 that I got became 12, which ended up being a pretty comprehensive win. Uh, so, at the moment, because um, because the game's come out quite... You know, it, it just came out today. There are a lot of people online playing, so you won't have to wait around for a game to go... Oh, there we go. I'm about to play the same guy in Hanafida. <laughs> He's obviously a big Hanafida fan as well. Unfortunately, this game doesn't have leaderboards for playing online, so or ELO systems or anything like that. So there's no real progress to feel that you that you feel like you're making as you you play. You don't get leaderboard points, you don't get ELO scores, and that's a little bit disappointing. But again, this is an introduction to those board games rather than a dedicated app to give the more competitive players something. There is a very good Hanafida card game that's dedicated. It's just Hanafida. It's not 51 games. There's just Hanafida. But you have to get it off the Japanese uh, eShop. 
I'm a big fan of it. I might stream that again. At, uh, might, I might stream that at some point. Okay, so straight off the bat, I've got two seeds, which are, again, the animal cards. If you can get five of those animal cards, that's an easy hand to win. It's always good to have a couple of those so that if you need to chase that to kind of close out the hand early, you, you want to. Uh, now, right at this point, the Rain Man's not particularly valuable because my opponent already has the Crane. The Rain Man only becomes potent when you have a lot of those cards together. Instead, what I'm going to do is grab the Cherry Blossoms because that is crazily valuable card. And just like the Moon, you want to get that out of the game as fast as possible, even if you're not trying to get those cards yourself. Unfortunately, the Sake Cup is there on the play field, which means that he may well grab it. Um, or he, you know, he might turn over the card and get lucky. Which, obviously, I don't want to happen. Because I want that Sake Cup at this point. Pair the Sake Cup up with the Cherry Blossoms. And you get the same amount of points as if it was paired with the Moon. You get 5 points, which is an easy win, to hand, easy win hand. So right now I've got nothing but junk in my hand, but I throw this one out, and assuming he doesn't claim it, and he won't because he's already got the crane, he's got the most powerful card in that set of four, I'll be able to, in the next turn, claim the poetry ribbon there. So let's just throw that out. It's a safe one to throw. You don't game. What do you mean you don't game? <laughs> this, this is a good game, this one. Once you get the hang of it, I promise you what I'm saying will make a whole lot more sense. Um, okay, so I'll grab that. Right now, his best chance is looking like getting the chaff, so we, that's just 10 cards of junk. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, he's just got the poetry. He got the sake cup. Damn it. That means I can't claim that. I'm not sure if this guy's that experienced at this game, to be honest. Um, I'll grab the boar. Not that that's going to help me much, but I wanted the poetry ribbon. I've now got three. If I can get two more... No, he's got the chaff. So he'll win this hand. He will probably finish it. Yeah. So three points because he got ten chaff cards plus two, which makes three points. It's actually a pretty good hand for him to start with. Ooh, now this is good. So here's the thing. He's in, as you can see, the Sake Cup... Um, the Sake Cup item there, that one, uh, the two cards, the two other cards from the month are on the play field, and I've got two cards in my hand. That means there's no way that he can claim the Sake Cup. I can take that whenever I want. So instead, I'll grab the boar and the butterflies which gives me a good start there so he's claimed the cherry blossoms which is fine um oh this is great so i got the boar and the butterfly in the last turn this turn i'll grab the deer which is actually a set it's called boar deer butterfly and it's worth pretty good points and just like that, I'm going to win the hand. So, bang. Boar, dear butterfly is now mine. I will finish the turn. The reason being that the person that wins the previous hand goes first in the next hand. And because this is only three rounds, I want to make sure that I'm going first in the last round. Because that is a big advantage. And boar, dear butterflies is actually worth lots of points anyway. So, I'm two points ahead going into the last round. Now, this is dangerous. If he happens to have the moon, there are two cards out there already that he can pair up and just claim the moon. But I'm actually going to take the risk because I'm going to take the crane, I think. Yes, I'm going to take the crane because the poetry ribbon there is worth a lot of points. And my goal here is just to make sure that somehow I win the hand. Or because if he, I mean... Two points to make up the difference is not much. So I just need to make sure I win the hand. That way, I win. Whoever basically wins this one is going to win the, the game. 
So I need to make sure that I just clear it out. I go for a cheap win of a low, low number of points, but that'll be enough for me. The good thing about Hanafida <laughs> is if you're ahead, um, it's much easier because defending a lead is much easier than trying to come back from behind because when you're trying to come back from behind, you need to take more risks. Um, and... It, it, you know, you need to koi koi and stuff. And it, it, it becomes very difficult. When you play in a full game of Hanafida, you play 12 rounds rather than three. And... That becomes very strategic then with uh, how you... Oh, there we go. I just won with three lights. So that was just three of the top cards there. Top point cards was enough. I don't need to Koi Koi because I'm already ahead so I can finish. When you play 12 rounds of Koi of uh, Hanafida, there's a lot of strategy about how to score and to protect the lead or try to come back from behind. And it's a fascinating game when that happens. I really love Hanafida the strategy of Hanafida. At first, it feels like you're just pairing up random cards, but as you really understand the game, it has, much like poker, really, it has a, a, a lot of strategy to it. And where you think that, you know, it's quite a simple game, when you play against somebody who really knows what they're doing, it's a very different experience. But let's play a slightly more familiar game, I think, for people um to show i guess the variety of 51 worldwide games let's play texas hold'em if we can uh if not let's play well mahjong there's no chance <laughs> there's just no chance that anybody else is trying to play mahjong which is a pity mahjong is an amazing game but it is also very abstract and obscure and difficult to get into and understand so most people won't be touching that one <laughs> you obviously play the wrong type of card games because I can promise you there, there are a lot of card games that are very much about strategy. If you've ever played Bridge, there's no cheating in Bridge. No cheating whatsoever. I'll almost certainly get a game going straight away with this one. But uh, more seriously, I do love the abstract nature of card games um not just hanafta i also love western european style card games with the traditional deck of cards i grew up playing 500 cribbage bridge texas hold'em i grew up playing all of those games and how how you go about thinking about card games is is um is really uh it's it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun Hello, Harvard. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, I, I mean, you just joined the stream, I assume. But um, one of the... This game is great for introducing people to the various games. But in terms of actually playing more in-depth, it is disappointing that they do limit you. Like, uh, Hanafida is limited to three games online where... The real Hanafida is uh, a 12-game extended experience. Mahjong is limited. Uh, Texas Hold'em is limited. So, yeah. As I wrote in my review, this is a more an intro-level kind of game experience. And then if you do find it interesting, then you should jump uh, at some of the more advanced apps. There is a Texas Hold'em app on Switch. It's a free-to-play casino game. And other than the Texas Hold'em thing, it's pretty terrible. But there is Texas Hold'em poker there, which is good fun. And you get free chips to play with every year, uh, every day. So you can play a couple of rounds. Um, right, so Texas Hold'em. That's a pretty good hand, actually. A nine and an eight of the same suit. Let's call. call. I should say that I'm pretty terrible at Texas Hold'em. Every time I play, I end up losing. So, it's not like enough that I'm going to probably make some very stupid strategic mistakes while I play this one. I'll play Hanafida again just to remind you all that I do know how to play some card games. 
So one pair so far, by my guess, somebody out there has a king, which would mean that my hand is not great. But at the moment we're only checking, okay. so let's just play along. Ah, he's bet. Here's the question: Do I? There's no chance I can make a. There's no chance I can make a straight. There's no chance I can make a flush. He's almost certainly got a king, so let's just fold. fold. I'm talking through my strategy as I play. Yeah, as I said in my review or video of this game, um, Texas Hold'em is definitely a kind of game of attrition and the flexible strategies that you need as your situation in the game changes. So when you're up versus when you <laughs> and there was a straight how is that for the most stupid luck i said there was not going to be a straight opportunity and there is of course a straight uh as i was saying um and texas hold'em really you know the strategy changes depends on where you're at uh in the game if you're up on chips if you're down and that is removed when there's only a couple of rounds to play so it's not a great example of the best of texas hold'em I know, I know, lol, yeah, yeah, this is, this, uh, every time I play Texas Hold'em, I do that. I always fold where I think there's absolutely no chance that I'll end up with a winning hand, and I did have a winning hand there. A straight would have beaten two pairs easily. Oh, uh, I hate this game. I love this game, but I hate this game. <laughs> uh, it's so frustrating. And that's an absolute terrible start. Uh since I've put the big blind in, I might as well stay in as long as nobody raises the bet. But there's just nothing to that hand. To be honest, I haven't even played the blackjack game in 51 Clubhouse games yet. I, I don't mind blackjack, but it's not really um, it's not really a competitive board game, is it? You know. For me, Clubhouse Games is at its strongest when you get a chance to play games that are inherently competitive. Um, so Call Call cost me nothing to stay in the hand so far, so I'll stay. It's not going to be a good hand for me. Ooh! That suddenly becomes more intriguing. Three, four, five. There's an outside chance that could become a straight, and after the last hand, I'm not against the idea that I might get lucky there. So let's Check. hang in there for now. I mean, blackjack is blackjack is a, at its most fun when you're actually gambling for real money, and I hate to say that because I'm on a stream and I would hate to actually encourage gambling. Check. But when there's actual kind of real money stakes, that luck moment when the card kind of turns over, there is a certain level of excitement to it, and there's no way I'm staying in this hand. So, yeah, when it's just kind of fake money that you're betting, it, there's not much to the game. At least in my view. Whereas Texas Hold'em still has a lot of strategy to it, so I quite enjoy it even when it's with fake chips. It's a bit like Roulette, actually, Blackjack. I, I enjoy Roulette as a game because of that luck element, but if you're not really betting money, there's not much excitement to to rule it. Ooh, I start with a pair. Yes, 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 yes. I'm a very conservative um Oh, raising me already. Let's uh let's call that. Um I'm a very conservative poker player. Very, very conservative. It costs me. It always costs me. I love it. I love it. You call people's bluffs when you've got nothing. That's great. Oh, raising again. Everybody's raising on nothing. It must be because it's getting close to the end of the round that people want to get out. I can't imagine anybody has a better starting hand than me. I mean, of course, it's possible somebody's probably got two aces there. Well, somebody possibly has two aces, but a pair in the hand is such a good hand to start with. Fuck it, I'll call it. I'll call it. 
I reckon the other guys are just going crazy because it's close to the fifth round. Oh, two pair. Two pair. Straight out the gates. One more two or seven and I've got a full house. And saying that, I'm confident with this hand and you watch, I'm going to lose it. Yeah, Somebody else has got like two twos or something. So then I've got four of a kind. I hate poker. <laughs> Da, 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 da. betting betting screw it i'm gonna raise it i'm going all out now um <laughs> oh you're one of those people do the I, I i would not um i would not enjoy playing poker with you simply because as soon as people raise like crazy i immediately fold uh, unless i'm 100 percent confident with my hand Check. At the moment, I'm pretty close to 100% confident with my hand. I mean, if these, he's got an 8 or a 10, I'm actually in trouble. But the fact he just checked then, screw it, I'm going for it yeah. now. I'm pretty sure he hasn't got anything. He would raise if he really had a good hand right now. I'm trying to play psychology with people you can't see. Oh, it's a draw. Oh, my goodness. We both had all 7s. We had exactly the same hand. That's all right. I mean, one strategy I do like to do when I play poker is, because I am a conservative poker player, I like to make sure that nobody actually knows what cards I actually have at any point. So whenever I play poker, especially with people who I haven't played with before, I would probably drop out of the first 10 hands, just so people have absolutely no idea exactly what I, um, what I have. There are times where I play poker and I uh, drop out right in the last moment simply because i don't want to show people my cards and then that way i try to lull people in, i try to lull people into a false sense of security whereby they think that if i am going to go with a hand all the way to the end i've got something worth playing for just generally doesn't work i'm not a good poker player but um i do try and play the psychological game which is not possible when you're playing a video game and people can't see your facial reactions and how you respond to the cards that you've got. If I've got a flush, that is uh, that is a, an instance where I'll actually stay in the, in the hand right through to the end, regardless of what's been bet and where my chip position is, I will, I'll stick in with a, when I've got a flush. And I know it's not a you know guaranteed winning hand, but for me that's kind of that's kind of when I hit that moment that I've got a hand that I'm so confident with that I'll stick with it. So I've got nothing here. I'm going to fold. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Poker games should have that facial. I mean, so much of poker is actually seeing what your opponents do. There is a big part of the experience that's lost when you play video poker, which um. Oh my goodness, I've lost that hand too. I would have won that hand. He had a pair of twos. I had a pair of fours. Oh, that's two hands I've lost now that I would have, could have won. Yeah, something like that. VR, VR could do a lot for video poker. Or for online poker or anything like that. Cool. And it'd be pretty cool. I'd certainly play. I don't get a chance to play poker much in real life anymore. Everybody's a long distance away from me that I used to play poker with.
yeah, God knows when that Mickey magazine's going to come to me. <laughs> it's um, it has been delivered to my parents-in-law, but with the way that shipping works to Australia at the moment, who knows when I'll actually get a chance to have it? I might actually be in Japan before I get it, but it's there. It's waiting for me. Oh, I might as well stick into this. There's a chance that I'll get a, a straight. I haven't had a chance to watch that yet. I will definitely watch that drama CD. I've got it saved. I just haven't had a chance yet. I'm generally pretty busy over the week. I have this... I build up a list of things I want to do on the weekend. Over the course of the weekend, that drama CD cool. is on there. There's a thing to do. There is a chance that I could get a straight here. Oh, wait, I need an eight. Ah, I didn't get it. All I got is a pair. But it is the last round, and I need to make the chips up, so I might as well play. Nope. Got nothing. Anyway, there we go. I come third in Texas Hold'em Poker to the guy that dropped out and quit. <laughs> I told you I was not good at poker. Told you. Okie dokie, let's try something else. Let's see if we can get a go off this baseball thing going. Let's see if anybody's out there, anybody out there is looking to play toy baseball. Uh, what else will we give a go? Well, let's do toy curling if we can. And then, let's guarantee ourselves, <laughs> let's guarantee ourselves nobody else will pick that one. So, toy baseball, toy curling, or mahjong. I want to show people the board games if I can. Ah, there we go. I get to play toy baseball. Excellent. Excellent. So this is a recreation of an actual board game you can get in Japan and has been popular for generations. The Aussies that are on the stream will know what I'm talking about when I say it's a bit like oh, Test yeah. Cricket, that classic board game. Um, oh, this is not going to be good. If there's serious lag here, this is going to be terrible to play. I just realized that this is an action game. And uh, that suddenly means that ping and stuff matters. <laughs> this is going to be terrible. Okay, dokie. Play a left. Great, thanks. All right, so let's not play the board games. <laughs> let's go back to the card games and things that don't require uh, real-time interaction. So, Hanafida, Texas Hold'em, or Mahjong. Yeah, I try not to pay attention to the, the business side of uh, sports. Because they do tend to be depressing. Um, it's a bit like FIFA, you know, like soccer. Football, sorry. The World Cup. Always watch it religiously, but... You know, I'm going to even watch the Qatar World Cup. But l let's face it, it's, um, it's a horrible business. And unforgivably horrible, but... The football's so good. <laughs> the football is just so good, you can't like, help it. So... It's my, it's my thing of shame, but I also don't apologise for it. Football's a great sport. Not the football on this sort of thing, though. There's a, one of the 51 games in this pack is, um, is, uh, I guess, a little bit of a recreation of foosball, but a little bit different. It's not very enjoyable, to be honest. 
But the baseball one is good. I definitely recommend the baseball one for single player. Uh, I, as you would have seen from that stream, doesn't quite work so well when <laughs> you rely on ping rates and stuff. But the single player thing, it, it's a great game. It's a great board game and they've done a really good job of recreating it in this package. Okay, so that's a junk hand and a half. Um, but it costs nothing for me to stay in, so whatever. Wow. So that was a big win. Uh, two pair. Two aces and sevens. So that, there's not much that could beat that right now. Yeah. Let's actually bet. Need to make the most of this one. He'll probably fold. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of... Uh, let's raise. Let's play <laughs> Let's play your buff bluff. There's almost no chance. Unless you've got an ace. Which he may well do. If he has an ace, then we could be in trouble. But, um... Yeah, I'm not a fan of fighting sports at all. Uh, I don't like MMA. I don't like boxing. They're, they're not my thing. I'm, I'm not a fan of wrestling either. These are That's nonsense stuff. That is... I like my sport, but it's the, the sport side of things that I like. I'm pretty sure that he actually does have an ace now. He's either bluffing or he's got an ace. So let's just go crazy. It's been a while since there's been a boxing video game. When was the last one? On the PS3? There was a boxing game on PS3, wasn't there? The last boxing game I remember playing was... Um, <laughs> the Rocky boxing game on the DS. That was a long time ago. And yeah, I quite enjoyed that for what it was. I do like Rocky. I'm not a fan of boxing, but Rocky... The human story in Rocky appeals to me. Whoa! We all lost the, the AI. <laughs> Who had a flush? <laughs> we, there we were being confident that we had two pair. <laughs> yeah, and see? This is what happens. Every time I actually play... The, uh, the pot. Every time I think that I'm, I've got a pretty good hand and I decide to go in, I end up screwing myself over. Now I've got to play the rest of the game with absolutely no chips to work with. That'll teach me. Oh, Fight Night Round 3. Yeah, okay. I never played it, but um, I do remember that franchise. The last fighting sports game I played, I did play the MMA one, or a MMA one, I don't remember which, on the PS4. Was not, was not a fan. Check. The last wrestling game I played was back on the Nintendo 64. I think the last wrestling game I played actually had Hulk Hogan in it. That's how long ago it was. So, Check. yeah. When it comes to the sports games, I am much more a fan of the more traditional sports. I like, I do like my cricket. I like my FIFA. Although that said, I, I'm a bigger fan of Pez, but I like my sports games to be portable. So as terrible as the FIFA games on the Switch are compared to the PS4, I play them simply because I, um, I like, I like playing them on the go. Mind you, I'm actually a bigger fan these days of um, the Football Manager games. Big, big fan of the Football Manager games. I like the strategy of building up a team from the lowest level divisions. I think it was two Football Managers ago, I actually took a, a team from the fourth division in the English League up to the Premier League, and that was a pretty... That was one of my great achievements in video gaming. And I will say, actually, there is a sports game I'm playing right now Aww. that I'm quite a big fan of, and that is um, the Tour de France game. There's a new Tour de France game that's just released, and you'd never think that those would work as a sports game, but they absolutely do. Absolutely do. Um, they're not really a sports game in the same sense that FIFA or NBA or whatever is. It, it's more about the management side of things, and I just lost... 
I actually lost all my chips. I got knocked out. Um, it's a management game where you need to monitor your team's endurance throughout the, the course of a race. Use all the same tactics that uh, teams actually use in the Tour de France because they don't go cycling all out from the start. And... Um, yeah, manage your gels and all that kind of stuff. There's no doping option for people that are interested. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I quite like the Tour de France games, as niche as they are. I'm talking about anything else about this woeful Texas Hold'em hand <laughs> game that I'm playing because I actually got knocked out. In under five rounds, I got knocked out. That, I feel horrible. I feel like I need to go back to Hanafida just to gain some of my pride back as a gamer. Yeah, there's no um, there's no rankings in clubhouse games, as far as I'm aware. This is the first time I played more than a couple of games in a row, but I, I'm not seeing any scores go up or down. So um, I'm pretty sure that you just play, and I guess that kind of does emulate the experience of playing card games and stuff in the real world unless you're competitive then you're not really going to have scores and stuff you know this is not a tournament kind of thing so yeah i'm kind of okay with that but i can see that that's going to cost the community over the long term i think a couple of months down the track the only way you're going to be able to play clubhouse games is if you play with people who are on your friends list uh, let's do something a little different. Let's go with chess. Let's see if we can get a chess game going. I'm pretty good at chess, although I'm pretty deep into this bottle of wine, so I might not be so good at chess. Uh, let's do Hanafida again, just in case I get a game going there. And... Let's do... Let's do Karom, because I don't think many people know what Karom is. But it's actually a really cool game. It comes from India. It's very cultural. It's quite neat. I'm a fan of Karam. I think that's how you pronounce it. Probably not. Now there's somebody. Somebody's going to correct me and say that I, my my Indian um, my ability to pronounce Indian words is really bad. So anyway, no, no, chess is not somehow simplified. Chess is exactly the game that you know is chess. Um, just without the ELO ranking. To be honest, without the ELO... Oh, there we go. We're about to play chess against the guy that I was just playing poker with. Everybody's online at the same time. Um, what was I saying? Without the ELO system in chess, it does feel very limited. But if you just want to play a game, then yeah, you get to play chess. I'm white, which is... I mean, as far as the solved version of chess goes, that means I'm in the winning position right from the start. Let's go with my... I'm a very boring chess player, just so everybody knows. I play exactly the same opening every time. And anybody who knows chess knows that you're going to be able to... How to beat me. <laughs> to be honest, I, I'm a very uninspiring, uh, uninspired chess player. Mind you, I don't think this guy's playing the, uh, the game that he needs to, to beat me <laughs> chess is a really good game um i don't think he actually knows how pieces move hopefully i'll get a win out of this that should be an easy take for me yes
Interesting move there, fella. Um, what do I do here? Well, he's not threatening anything that I can't defend. So, let's... Mind you, I could even stop him from taking a piece. They don't give you much of a clock. 33 seconds to actually think of a moving chest. Come on. Uh, let's, 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 let's be threatening. Let's be aggressive. I'm going to screw up and it's going to be on record that I made a terrible mistake in chess. You watch. Oh, Custling. Very brave. Uh, what do I do now? Well, we might as well threaten the bishop. That way, if he doesn't do something with that bishop, it's not going to be able to help him. So just to roughly explain how I feel or think about chess, I play basically according to the, I mean, the very simple idea that the person that controls the middle four squares, these four squares of the play field, is really the one that's in the position to win a game of chess. And that's basically how I play chess. It's very uninspired, like I said, but it kind of works. Like, I'm not terrible at chess. I can win matches, but... I'm by no means a grandmaster, let's put it that way. Oh, he's threatened my queen. How brave. Unfortunately for him... Ooh, that's a pretty good move, actually. He's going to get my horsey. He's going to get my knight now. Um, wow, that was stupid. How do I miss that? This is what happens when you think to play a strategy game after, after getting deep into a bottle of wine. There's no way out of that. He's going to take my horse, my knight, and um, I'm going to lose it. Best outcome I can hope for is I take his pawn back and maintain my position on the board. But that gives his queen a full run. Uh, I'll do it. He's going to take my knight now. Oh, shoot. That was dumb. <laughs> that was... That was... Uh, that was uh, that was believe unbelievably dumb. What are you talking about? How is Atelier Games going to have an 18 plus patch? There's no way Koei Tecmo would do that. I can't believe I just did that. Oh my goodness. Now everybody's going to think I'm the worst chess player on the planet. How absolutely stupid. I'm embarrassed. I'm genuinely embarrassed by that move. Um... No, but seriously, how is there's there's no way that Koei Tecmo would do R18 stuff. There's just no way. I can't I can't imagine a, a world. I cannot imagine a world where Koei Tecmo would do that. Um what was I doing? Might as well put more pressure on this bishop now. I can't believe I did that. On international broadcast, <laughs> effectively, I just... Uh... Well, now I'm definitely playing defensive for the rest of this game. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? He'll take that. I can progress my bish, my knight. Let's do that. Let's see how aggressive he's going to play. Yeah, no. Not bad, not bad, not bad. What I figured. Ah, clever. He's going to move there. He's going to threaten my knight. I do have a counter for that for now, though. Yeah, that sounds about right. 
And then he'll... Um... Oh, well, let's just play rapid chess. Let's hope that he makes mistakes. Because there's no way I'm out. I'm getting out of this one now. <laughs> I screwed this chess game up badly. Oh, I've already been threatened or something. Uh, do, 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 do. Ah, <laughs> I'm just giving him this one. Let's get out of here so I can do something else. Before it gets any worse for me. I tell you what, right about now, I'm glad that there's no ELO in, in, in this game because otherwise I would have lost my um, ranking. Never play chess after having some alcohol, people. That is the lesson for you all tonight, if nothing else. Good play, good play. I should have just stuck to Hanafada. I should have just stuck to Hanafada. Yeah, that'll be a checkmate, will it? Checkmate. Yeah. That'll teach me. I should have just stuck to the games I, I am absolutely best at, even when I'm not sober. Yeah, I am playing with you again, mate. You beat me. Um, let's try something different. Let's go with Anathana, Richie Mahjong, and Karen. Oh, I know. Let's try Mancala. If Mancala works, that's a pretty neat game, actually. I think people quite like Mancala. I think that'll be a, a surprise for people who pick up this thing and maybe they know Timping Bowling and darts and whatever I think oh my goodness there's an actual game of Mahjong going on <laughs> there's a game of Mahjong going on peoples I'm about to show you just how bad my Mahjong strategy is as I was saying Mancala will be a surprise I don't think many people know what Mancala is but once you get into it I think you'll be quite impressed by it because it is a neat game Okay, so, uh, I can't talk through Mahjong as I'm playing, I'm not anywhere near strategic enough about this game, but the basic idea is to create sets of three in a row, four, five, six, five, six, seven, one, two, three, or cr uh, create pairs, four, four, five, five, six, six, whatever, uh, and you ideally want to have your hand full of those kind of um, matches, and you've got to move pretty fast in this one because you only get 10 seconds per turn. Uh, Mahjong is actually a very fast-paced game. What was on the Nokia 3310? Mahjong? The only thing I remember on the Nokia 3310 was Snake. Snake was good. Snake's a classic. Um, so my basic strategy here is to... I've got, I've got a good couple of sets going. Um, I've got lots of pairs... And I don't really want East, West, South. Those are pains. I don't want those. I didn't know that. I honestly didn't know that. The only thing I remember on my Nokia was Snake. 
I remember playing a lot of snake. A lot, a lot of snake. Oh, a pair of S's. Good, south. It has both. Um, I'm playing easy. But it has both. Both easy and uh, hardcore. Um, fuck it. Let's get rid of the four. <laughs> As I was saying to anybody watching this stream back later, um, this is a really good introduction to a lot of games. I've tried to learn Mahjong before in a lot of other games. Like I, I tried to have... Um, the Yakuza series in particular, teach me Mahjong, but I've never been very good student of Mahjong, and I've never really understood the game. This version actually got me to understand the rules to enough of an extent that I can kind of follow what goes on in the action. I've still got a long way to go before I'm anywhere near competent with Mahjong, but I'm enjoying the process learning, and it is entirely because of this game. So I actually have a set of physical Mahjong tiles and stuff, and I kind of want to play now. I kind of want to find people to play the real game with. I mean, Mahjong... The weird thing is Mahjong has, like, books worth of rules to learn if you if you, if you try and learn the, the game through traditional means which is buy a book or whatever you basically get a full book and it it, it doesn't make sense <laughs> um it's very hard to learn actually hanafid is a bit like that as well but the basic game is very simple it's just about making little runs or matching things and um yeah see i've never had a chance to play mahjong against real people and i kind of want to that's how i learned bridge by just losing to real people actually my grandparents losing to my grandparents endlessly for years but eventually i learned bridge and i really appreciated that opportunity to learn bridge it's a good game as well and i think mahjong would be much the same just learning by playing <laughs> with real people it's a I can imagine that this is a pretty cutthroat game. And I've actually seen footage of people playing Mahjong for real, and they're just throwing tiles around like crazy. And it, it's just like this blur of hands. And watching experts play Mahjong is just the most spectacular thing and also the scariest thing I think I've ever seen. It's great. I love it. Sumo. Oh, it's Sumo. So I lost that hand. Luckily, I wasn't the only one that lost hand that, that hand, so we all had to give the guy points. So. <laughs> I love that description of it. In your head, it's it's, a, it, it's an Excel spreadsheet. That totally is is right. Um, I would imagine that if you're good at mahjong, your ability to understand and calculate odds really quickly. Like the chances of getting a particular tile at any point in time. That's where the real kind of the technique of the, the game comes in. Ah, oh, no, I threw the wrong one out. Fuck. Um, and yeah, it, it's all about the equivalent of counting cards and being really good at that. I can imagine that's where the strategy of or the, the, the expertise in Mahjong comes from. Um, personally, I just love the tiles. I actually like the feel of the tiles because they're nice and thick and they've got that heavy weight to them. It's a nice alternative to cards, which are, you know, thin and plasticky. Let's get rid of this one, because that doesn't go anywhere near what I might be looking at making a pair of at some point. Yeah, that's the other thing. You've got to be able to watch your entire the, the entire field. That's where I'm not quite up to at this stage. I just... Everything's such a blur. I'm really focused on my own hand, and that's about it. So I'm still, you know, way behind... And I have actually won games against the AI because the AI is that kind of bad. But I'm just... I'm lost when I actually have to compete in this thing. 
against people that are, you know, higher level AI or real people. I'm going to lose this game to be sure, but I am having fun. Um, so well, let's get rid of the dragon. I don't know why I did that. There was a feeling. I had a gut feeling that I need to get rid of that dragon. And that's probably wrong. Don't learn. You can learn Hanafida or Fuchi. Go back and watch my Hanafida play. You can learn how to play Hanafida by my strategy there. Do not think that how I'm playing this game is on any level adequate. Let's get rid of East. Because there's already East thrown out, right? So that means the chances of getting the pair of East is lower. And I've already got a pair of Souths. And there's Norths out there as well. Quite a few Norths. So I should get rid of North next. <laughs> you see, you're schooling me on Mahjong here, Harvard. Thanks for that. I didn't want to get rid of my south. Fucking time ran out. I will say one thing I'm very disappointed about is that this game does not have... This game does not have Go in it. And I know we've talked about this offline, Harvard, but for other people on the stream, it is really disappointing that there's Chess, there's Hanafida, there's Mahjong, there's no Go. And Go is a amazing game. I'm actually good at Go. And it's kind of disappointing that it's not in this collection. I've got to get rid of the South now because stupid game made me throw my South out. What kind of strategy is that, AO? Anyway, um, it's really disappointing that there's no go in this game, <laughs> in Clubhouse game. There's a lot that, I mean, I really love it, and I think I'm going to be playing this for a long time uh, to come. But there is a lot that I find disappointing about Clubhouse games, especially compared to the DS one. Because the DS one was obviously limited because it was uh, just... Um, it was a DS game, but it really had a, I felt like it had a more genuine attempt to capture a lot of board games in there. It had Stratego, it had all the card games. It wasn't focused on like baseball mini games and stuff. I feel like this game has missed that a little bit, but that's okay. See, now I just need a three. I need a three in the, the red suit, whatever you want to call it. And I've got a full set. If I can get a three, I win. Sorry, dear the Ram, I'm just yelling at the screen because I'm so I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of engaged with this game now. I, I want to win. Um oh shoot, that was the wrong thing to do. That was the wrong thing to do. Harvard help me. I'm making all kinds of really stupid mistakes now. Sorry to everybody who likes Mahjong. I'm definitely playing her after again after this just to gain some ego back. Oh, what the hell. At this point, I'm just throwing things out there. Um, let's get rid of that. Yeah, I know I did. No, believe me, believe it or not, I'm at that point with Mahjong where I know... When I do something that screws me, so screws my game up, <laughs> um, but I don't know not to make the mistake until I've made the mistake. So I'm making lots of mistakes and realizing afterwards that I should not have made the mistake, and I feel stupid. And everybody who's watching this that actually knows Mahjong is laughing at me now, and I feel terrible. And I'm very sorry to those people because their game deserves more respect than what I'm giving it. But whoa. <laughs> I'm learning, so big L plate on my back as I play this.
it's weird how much focus Mahjong pulls you in. Like, throw the dragon. There's no, all the other dragons are out there, so that's okay. Um, when you start to play Mahjong, you just get absorbed in what you're watching in front of you. I'm actually forgetting that I'm kind of streaming at the, at the same time and talking. Like, I'm, I'm just talking my, through my own mental processes. But, um, yeah, it's kind of fascinating how much this game can just drag you in. And I don't know what it is. Is it the aesthetics? Is it the... Is it something about the mechanics? Because mechanically, this game is very similar to... To, um, to Rummy. And Rummy doesn't draw me in quite like this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. If only this stream was in real time, I could get Harvard to actually tell me which pieces to throw out in real time. But no, every time you uh, tell me I've screwed up, it's actually after the after the date. Um, the sheer amount... You're probably right, to be honest. The amount that you actually have to think as you're playing. And it's not not active thinking it's very passive thinking it's kind of the that that automatic response thing and that's why when you're watching good people play um mahjong they're just their hands are flying and it's all a big blur on the table um i think that you're you're absolutely right it's oh somehow i won that i don't know how but i did hallelujah i'm actually leading i am winning this game and i'll i'll take it <laughs> um yeah, I think it's just the automatic response that you have every time you play this. It's just like the, the instant movement, movement, the quick analysis of data. And it's all very, very beautiful and confusing and elegant. And it's so cool. Um, shit, 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 shit. Get, get, get rid of green. Oh, I threw out the wrong piece. Nobody had a hand, but I managed to, to get the points there, Harvard. So I'm winning right now. Um... One thing about playing this online is if you're you've only got ten seconds to actually take your turn, and if you're thinking about it as you're playing, it's very easy to throw out the wrong tile by accident, which absolutely screws you up in mahjong. Um, okay, so that's good. I wanted to get rid of the green one last time. Going to take the risk. Still don't understand the strategy of holding on to the dragons and the green dragons. Quick, Harvard, tell me which numbers should I be throwing? <laughs> which just give me give me the numbers and um, just just tell me like predict about twenty seconds in advance what I should be throwing, and <laughs> just tell me because yeah the the feed is delayed by about twenty seconds. So by the time you see me do something, it's already way past when you've told me to do something. So there we go. I've got a runner three there, six, seven, eight. That's pretty good. I can throw two next turn. I will be throwing green two next turn. By the time you hear this, it's going to be well beyond, and it's probably bad strategy to do so. But I'm going to be throwing the green two this turn, as I say this. <laughs> Harvard's Harvard's uh, on the feed. Harvard's like screaming into the the screen about how badly I'm playing this game. But I'm sorry, Harvard. Uh, it's not deliberate. I am trying to listen to you, but the game is just that delayed. I'm seeing Harvard's all, all his feed as he's... It, it, it's fascinating. Streaming's not real-time enough yet. I should be doing this on Twitch so that people can actually give me real-time advice. <laughs> I'm going to throw the dragon. This is going to ruin my game. You watch. Somebody's going to pawn or whatever. <laughs> Dithy Ram saying what's going on. I, I don't know either, Dithy. <laughs> I'm lost now. Uh, I'm beyond it. Um, I've got a whole bunch of east, southeast, west, north things and none of them match and I know that I shouldn't be holding on to them and yet for some reason I'm holding on to them and I'm not getting rid of the tiles I should be. Let's get rid of the two. Yeah, I know I need to try to hold on to the pairs. Um... I also try to create the runs. The bit of the game where I'm struggling is in understanding... Oh, no! Oh, no! How did that happen? I had a communication error. I was having a great game then, and it just quit on me. Uh, as I was saying, my um, 
my struggle where I struggle with Mahjong is understanding how to use the northeast southwest and the dragons I'm not still I'm still not quite sure about when to hold on to those when to get rid of them um, I think the game probably saved me let's face it I, I think it, it it crashed or dropped out just to save me the embarrassment of what was happening <laughs> but uh, let's try again and Mancala Um, so Harvard, at some stage, you're going to have to teach me about how to use the, uh, how to, how to use the, uh, the dragons properly, because I'm never sure when to actually hold on to them. That's the problem. Like if I've got one, do I hold on to it? If there's one and one on the, f on the play field that's been thrown out, do I still, do I still hold on to it? Do I try and get three? I, I don't get it. Um. It's the same with the northeast southwest. How many of those do you need before it becomes worthwhile to hold on to them? Do you need two, three of the same suit? But thank goodness we're going back to Hanafido and I get to play someone from Japan. So you can all watch me master this game. You're all going to get it schooled about actually one game I do know how to play. 100% confident I know how to play Hanafido. That's not boasting. That's just me having played this way too much over the last couple of years. I'd take on the Yakuza if I got a chance with enough of it. Okay, so what are we going to do? Let's start by... This is a pretty interesting little um, list. This is a pretty interesting drop, but the blue scrolls are actually worth quite a lot because if you get three of them, you get a lot of points. And at the moment, there's only one on the play field and... I can grab that with the butterflies to get an extra boost because the butterflies are particularly useful. So let's do that. And ooh, let's grab the boar as well because that way if I then grab the deer, I've actually already got a winning hand. Uh, I'm playing somebody who knows what they're doing so they're going to grab, they're going to stop me from scoring the points. All right, let's let's uh, let's keep going with this, the scrolls. I started with the scroll, scroll strategy. I'll stick with it. Yeah, Harvard, you're going to get a lesson about how to play uh, the Hanafida here. I promise you, I know this game. Like the back of my hand. Um, it is a Japanese person. They actually know how to play Hanafida right from the start. They stopped me from grabbing that deer because that was a winning hand for me. So that's entirely the reason they did it. So I'm going to have to play well to beat this person. Japanese name or not. They're <laughs> I think they're authentically Japanese. Um... Well, let's grab that. I only need one more scroll now to round out the hand. Ooh, that was a bonus for him. Bugger. If I throw this out and he doesn't grab it with the cherry blossom basket, I'll win. Okay, let's do that. Oh, dear. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I won this hand. Cool. Um... So my strategy from the start of this hand was to get as many of the ribbons as I could because I started grabbing one ribbon and I actually had a good hand for the ribbons. If you get five ribbons, you score. It's only give, going to give me one point, but we're only playing three rounds. So having the lead into the next round when I didn't have much of a hand otherwise is a big bonus. And Harvard, the uh, the strategy of Hanafida is where the joy of the game comes. I promise you, this is, once you actually understand the how people think when they play Hanafida, like how the Yakuza think when they, they're stealing people's monies. Um, how people think when they play Hanafida is kind of the joy of the game. And I found this fascinating. The thinking behind it is actually really quite detailed. Okay, so... What the heck? Ah! Oh. So... <laughs> How can I explain this? I started off with a really good hand. There's certain hands where you immediately win just by having that hand. It's like this magic hand. It's like the friends where you have the cups hand, if you remember friends. Um, <laughs> if you have that hand, you automatically win, which is which is kind of a, a lucky thing indeed. Um, 
So 99% chance that I'll actually win this whole game now. Just because I had that really lucky hand. <laughs> the sorcerer. <laughs> yeah, it, it's totally unfair when you get one of those hands. Um, I'll uh, grab that now. Make sure he can't get the sake cup. The guy's probably cursing at me right now because uh, uh, the pure luck, I've just got too many points for him to catch up. See, if you're playing a 12 round hand of Hanafido like you're meant to, winning one hand because you just got a lucky draw is not such a big deal. You can come back from that. But when it's just three rounds, which is unfortunately what uh, 51 Clubhouse game sticks you with, it it definitely um, it bites. So luckily there is an online leaderboards because otherwise this guy would be feeling really hard done by right now. He may actually still pull it back. He's got a better hand than I do in this one. If he grabs that moon, then... He, oh, he's going to grab the moon. So he will probably koi koi now, but I haven't got anything to stop him. So <laughs> when I was just so confident about winning, now it's actually looking pretty unlikely. I'm going to have to try and just grab points however I can. And unfortunately, I can't do much about it. I'm just so far behind on just about everything. So I'm going to try and grow, go for, for chaff. I'm going to try and get 10 cards at the lowest value. Nah, shoot. He just got everything. So he wins. I just got lucky the previous round. He got crazy lucky there. Look at that. He got 30 points in one hand. And there was just not much I could do about that. I played a pretty good hand. But... <laughs> He just got very lucky. Sometimes uh, Hanafida being the nature... The, the, the nature of Hanafida being... Sometimes there are just hands that go your way and hands that go against you. Play again. See if he wants to. No. Um, and again, if you're playing 12 rounds, like you should with Hanafida, having a lucky hand doesn't matter that much. But when it's only three, it matters a whole lot. See if I can get a game of Mancala going. Mancala is a really neat game. I've only played it a couple of times, but yay! I get to play Mancala. Excellent. Good game this one. It's basically like beginner's backgammon, really. The goal is to move little pieces and collect them all into your side of things. Uh, I'm assuming that this is a solved game because it's quite. You know, set in stone. But what I want to do first is make sure that... So, you pick up a bunch of stones, you drop one at a time in each subsequent uh, uh, hole. And the basic idea is to, as you'll see, if I drop one and collect them all into your end. It's a bit hard to explain, but you'll see it as we play along. Um... Yes, Harvard, let's absolutely. You can you can school me in Mahjong as we play, so please do. I'm looking forward to that. Have a good night. Thanks for joining in on the stream and watching along. And we'll see you next time. Whoops. That was a mistake, I think. I don't think he meant to do that, because what I'll do here is I'll grab that and move that, and I'll get seven. I'll get all of his stones. I don't think he meant to do that. I think he miscounted. I don't think this guy is particularly good at his game, to be honest. Um, What am I going to do? Let's... Oh, no. If he knows what he's doing, he's... Oh, thank goodness he saved me. I realize I'm not explaining this game as we play, but... Um, the good thing is, if you pick up Clubhouse games, this game makes sense almost immediately. You understand how to play it in, like, one go. It's that kind of simple. Oh, he's going to get another turn. And he's going to get... Four of my coins. 
But it's quite neat. I actually really enjoy this one. I'm having a great time playing it. Right, I'll get another turn if I do this. There we go. And I'll get another turn if I do this. The strategy of Mancolor is actually quite simple, but it's a it's a it's a very elegant game. It's a very smart little game, actually. I think it's um what was I about to say? Capture. I think it's a game that people should play if they want to learn how the basic strategy of board games work, because I think it's that kind of game that it teaches you how to play board games. Uh, let's go this. Unfortunately for this guy, there's not much you can do to bring it back from here. Oh, that was a mistake on my part. I should have gone the other way. I would have got through. Uh, it doesn't matter. Big deal. I don't think... No, there's... I've got too many pieces now. He can't possibly bring it back from here. And just like that, they'll go to him, but I should have the total count that will... Yep, there we go. So that's Mancala. Uh, like I said, if that didn't make too much sense to you as you were watching, just when you play it, you'll understand how to play within a minute or two. Okay, so we might get more, try one more game before we hang up for tonight. Let's see how we go. As it should be, Zelda should always beat Link if you ask me. That's that's the way things are. Um, what will we do finally for our last one? Oh, what the hell! Let's give Chinese checkers a go. If somebody actually wants to play Chinese checkers, then so be it. No, oh, one more game of Hanafada. Excellent. Another Japanese person I get to play. Always best to practice against the people who, who, are, who are culturally expert at it. <laughs> Zelda for the lead of any Zelda game. Her name's in it, so she should be the lead character if you ask me. Great to have a Zelda game where Zelda was actually the protagonist. Anyway, uh, Hanafida, one more go at this. Let's see how we go against this player. So, oh, that's a junk hand. So, there's four cards in the month, and two of them are in the play field. Two of them are in my hand, meaning that there's nothing that the other guy can do to claim them, and there's no reason to waste a turn doing that, but let's just grab it. Ah, uh, he's going to grab the noon now. There we go. Told you. Um, given that he's got the moon, let's try and finish this as quickly as possible. So I'll grab as much chaff as I can to try and get the 10 card, 10 cards worth of junk, because my hand is just junk. This is a terrible hand, actually, to start with. And right now I'm playing very defensively, so I'll try to get 10 worthless cards as quickly as I can to get that one point that will... Um, mean I can save this hand. All he needs is what you got. Uh, I might get away with this actually. How many chaff cards have I got? Seven. I may just get away with this now. 
if I'm lucky. I'm lucky. <laughs> I played that right. So he had the much better hand. He had much better cards in his hand. I could tell that right from the start. But by going for the junk, I was able to get to 10 before he could form a better hand. I only get one point from that, but I still control the game. I still go first in this round. And that's going to be really valuable as you're about to see because I'm going to grab the Cherry Blossoms. And that's one of the most valuable cards. And I probably would not have grabbed that if he went first. So... Ch uh, no, I love Chinese checkers. I genuinely love Chinese checkers. I uh, grew up... It was kind of a Christmas tradition in my family where the whole... The extended family came together. And my father's side, there was seven aunt, aunts and uncles. It was a big family. And every Christmas... It was a family tradition to play Chinese checkers. So I love Chinese checkers. I just think it's a silly game. Not as silly as Ludo. I'll never play Ludo. That's terrible. Um, so this is close. He only needs a birds to finish. I've got the birds, so he can't get that set. He could get the poetry slips, which is the real concern right now. If he knows what he's doing, he'll go for those. I'll throw that out because that's not worth much at this stage. He'll probably grab... If he knows what he's doing, yeah, he'll grab that. And he'll get blue poetry slips. There we go. He koi won't koi koi. Oh, he koi koi. Hmm. So if he manages to get another set, I'm in big trouble. Probably fair call, actually. If he's got the right hands in his... Uh, that's why. He's definitely got a much stronger set of cards than I do. Let's grab that one. What's he got? He's got not much else. He might not be so good at this game. He might be good at like understanding the sets, but... Ah, oh, no, there we go. He had a lot of the poetry cards. Not much I could do about that, unfortunately. And that's a huge multiplier. <laughs> huge multiplier. So there's not... I mean, there's no way I can come back from that. 20 to... 20 to 1. He's going to win this one now, for sure. So, But let's try and get some... Salvage some pride and win one more hand. What have I got to work with? I'd rather wait for the moon... It doesn't really matter if he gets the moon at this stage, so let's go with a boar. What's he got? Well, he won't get the sake cup because he would have claimed that immediately if he had it. The rain man's not such a big deal. Um, let's throw that out. Because with any luck, I'll be able to grab the butterflies and work towards boar deer butterfly. I have the butterflies in my hand, so... There we go, I grabbed the butterflies, and now I just need the deer to show up and be on my side. Ah, he had the deer. Oh, he had the moon as well. It's all over. <laughs> There's just no way I can get anything more than one or two points now. Unfortunately, the cards worked against me this time. Oh, he got the cup as well. Oh, he had everything. <laughs> All the luck went to him. He'll koi probably koi. koi koi. Yeah, just to rub it in. <laughs> this guy knows what he's doing, so he's he's playing cruel on me. He knows that I've got nothing. And oh, I actually pulled it back. <laughs> Poor bugger. So I get multiple of one because I beat his koi koi. But unfortunately, one times one is two, so not enough to bring it back. Anyway, he won that one easily. And on that note, wow, I've been streaming for a long time. That's the magic of um, of Clubhouse Games. Once you start playing, it's very hard to stop. So thank you very much for everybody for watching. I hope this was enjoyable. Uh, I hope if you've been interested in learning how to play Hanafida, what I've been saying is in some way of interest. Otherwise, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks very much for tuning in. We will see you at the next stream. Like I said, we have a stream tomorrow morning where we'll be playing Tokyo Xanadu EX, uh, the Persona like on PlayStation 4. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you hopefully soon enough. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Play lots of games. We'll see you next time.